Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronics Fix again. Today we're going to be looking at a PS4 uh, 1215A, also known as the 1200 in other countries. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to swap out the disk drive. This is another disk drive we have for it right here. Um, the reason for this is because if you notice on these newer disk drives, there's no big green board right here. Um, on the older models, this green board had a chip that was married to the motherboard. This model does not have that chip, does not have the board on it, just has this small uh, board with the power button on it, um, or the eject button. So it looks like these ones, um, you can just swap out the drive without changing anything um, on the board since it's not there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and swap that out and see if that will, um, it'll still work when we're done. We're assuming it will, simply because there's no uh, chip to be married to the motherboard. So let's get into it and take a look. Okay, the things you're gonna need for this repair are a Phillips, we use a PH1 for this, for the Phillips screws right there. We're gonna need a Torx T8 security bit. It's the one that's got the hole right in the middle. We've got a, a pair of uh, mini pliers. And then we also have a plastic opening tool that we're gonna to use to pry off the bottom case. So we'll get our tools out of the way here. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do um, oh, and by the way, you will need a, another disk drive if this is what you're doing to repair your console. So the first thing we're going to want to do with this is we're going to want to take off the screws on the back. There's just two screws on these models. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my um, electric screwdrivers for this, and I have to put the right bit in there. That would help. Okay. So we're just gonna use our electric screwdriver for the sake of speed to get these off. We actually don't even need to take this top one off. Um, I'm not sure why I did that. Um, probably just out of habit. The second one, this bottom one, is the only one that really has to come off. So the next thing we're gonna do is take the bottom case off. And what you wanna do with this is you gotta get your plastic pry tool there's a little seam right in here that you can get it right in and then you just move it along towards the back as you go. Sometimes you have to move it back and forth a little bit and then it'll eventually pry off if you keep prying on it. So it's kind of a pain at first, but you do get used to it. So then we've got the disk drive right here. So the disk drive, but we do have to take the power supply out on this one because these ribbon cables, they connect right under the power supply. On the older models, you could just take the disk drive out, but this one you do have to take the power supply out first. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. We've got three of the Torx Security T8 screws there. And then we have two of the Phillips. And I just loosen them both at the same time, and then I go ahead and pull them both up. Oh, it looks like this one's not quite loose enough. And leave them in this uh, silver thing here. That just makes it easier for me. So then what you're gonna wanna do is pull up on the side with the wire connector of the power supply. Pull up on that. You can pull up on this side too and help get it loose, loosened up, but this side kinda has to pull straight up because there is two connectors under there, right here, that uh, plug in right in there on the power supply. So the next thing, just like on the older models, we've got a connector right here, and what you're gonna wanna do with that is use a pair of pliers, pull up on one side of it. Oh, that one just pulled out because we've taken this apart before, but what you want to do is pull up on one side and then pull up on the other side. And you want to pull straight up and make sure not to, not to be pulling on this connector on here, because if you do, you're going to pull this connector off the motherboard, which is fixable. We fixed a lot of them, but um, it's not going to be easily fixable for most people. So just be very careful of that. The next thing is the Wi-Fi uh, antenna connector, the Wi-Fi cable connector for the Wi-Fi antenna, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, we'll just want to get pliers and pull straight up on that. So you just want to grab it um, with a good enough force that you'll hang on to it, but not so much that you're going to smash the little connector on the motherboard there. Okay, so then what we've got next are the disk drive connectors. So two of them you just pull straight up 
So this one over here, we can just pull straight up. And this one over here, we can pull straight up. And then we've got this one. Uh, the middle one is the widest one, and it's got a connect, this black connector you have to pull up on each side of it like that until that's loose. And then you can just pull straight up on that one as well. So the next thing you have to do is you're going to want to um, deroute this Wi-Fi cable, um, but you can actually start over at the front right here. So we'll want to take all of, we're going to go ahead and just take our T8 screws out of this and then we'll deroute the Wi-Fi cable. And these are more of the Torx T8 security Torx. We'll pull that out, one out in a minute. And if they don't want to pull out right away, I usually just grab them with a pair of pliers if they don't pull up with your screwdriver. Even though, you know, if your screwdriver is magnetic, a lot of times they'll stick, but sometimes they won't. So, so the next thing is we're going to want to deroute this Wi-Fi antenna cable. And it's pretty easy. I mean, it's just got um, the small plastic pieces that it just routes, routes through. And then down here, there's a little tiny, kind of like a hook that you also have to deroute it from because that hook is on the uh, disk drive. Okay, so then what we're going to want to do is remove this cable. So this basically, is, this little green board basically just has a power button on it. That's, as far as I can tell, that's pretty much all it's for. You can see the traces going from the connector all the way to the power button. Well, I say power button, it's actually like the eject button. So. Um, and we'll just leave that there. Once that is off, we've removed everything needed. So what we're going to do is just grab this by the sides and pull up on it just like that. And it just pulls out just like that. So we'll set that aside. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take our replacement disk drive. We're going to align everything, including the cables, make sure the cables don't get stuck down in here. So we're going to align it all, and it really just sits down in there. And this one looks like it almost got stuck, but we're good still. Okay, so that looks like it's all in there how it needs to be. So we're going to start connecting cables, first with the eject button ribbon cable. It goes right in there. And then we're going to go ahead and just route this Wi-Fi antenna cable back in here. So we're going to route it through the hook down here. And I'm going to use, actually we got it. So what I do to make sure there's enough room to get this on here all the way is I put this part on too. So I connect it down here on the hook and then I put this uh, metal antenna piece on. And then I just start connecting it from here and work my way back. You have to make sure that uh, the cable is fairly tight, but not, not totally. It's, you want to have a little play in it to make sure you have room to get it all on there correctly. So that's routed through. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the screws back in. And if they drop down in there, then you can just use some pliers or something like that to make sure they go right down in the hole where they're supposed to and then use your screwdriver to get them in there all the way. And you don't need to really crank on these or anything, you just want them good and snug. If you crank them down too tight, you're gonna either strip the plastic out or cause the plastic to break. So you just want them in there, in there nice and snug. So now we're just going to push these cables in. The two on the side, remember, are just basically push and pull. So you pull them out to get them out, and you just push them straight in there to get them back in. So this middle one, you want to make sure that this black piece has been pulled up and that it's loose. And then with that, then you just take the ribbon cable and you push it down there. What I do is I hold one finger on the ribbon cable while I use the fingernail of my other hand to just push down on it and that uh, puts that back in place. Okay, and then we're gonna get the Wi-Fi antenna cable. We just take it, we just push down with our finger on that and that uh, pushes it down. So for the power supply, we just take this connector 
you just push it back in and then push down on the white piece of that connector and that uh, pushes the connector down in there all the way. And then we swing it down like this, hold it up above and make sure everything is um, about level and even and then we just let it kind of drop down and then we just take our thumbs and push down. So that's in there all the way. Now we take our metal piece with the two screws on each end. We're just gonna go ahead and put those screws all the way in and tighten them down. Okay, and then we got our three T8 screws, the Torx T8 security screws. Okay, so that's all it takes to replace this. Um, now we are gonna verify that it does work. So um, I'm gonna put the bottom case back on this. I'm gonna turn it over. We're gonna get it all set up with the TV and plug it in and put a disc in and let it uh, install the disc and make sure that we can play the disc just to make sure that this method does work. So the back cover, basically you put the front side. So this is the front side with the, with the uh, eject button. You're gonna to wanna to put the front side on, and then the back side you just lower down, give it a little push, and there you go. We're not gonna put any the screws in yet because I wanna test this and just verify that it does work first. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so this is our PS4 that we just uh, replaced the disk drive. Uh, we just installed our, put our disk in the PS4 and it looks like it is um, starting to read it. So we're gonna go ahead and start that game up. It may take a few minutes here because it has to install. It's not a game that we have installed before. So we're gonna just wait a couple minutes here and make sure it's gonna start up for us. Um, and as long as it does, we're gonna call this one um, one that you can swap the drive out uh, just fine without replacing anything else. Just uh, swap the drives in and out, which is great news because the older PS4s, you had to replace uh, that uh, green board with the chip that's married to the motherboard. So it looks like Sony has done away with that and these drives are swappable all you want without uh, replacing that. So we'll just wait uh, just another couple seconds here just to make sure it's reading. It looks like it is. Um, with the older optical drives, um, there were a few, there were some times when you try and start it and it would look like it was gonna start, but then it would give you the error. So. Um, we're just making sure that this one is gonna work and it looks like it is. So it looks like these are swappable, um, pretty much however you want. Just get a, whenever, if your disk drive goes out, just get a, um, another disk drive that you know works and put it in and it looks like you're good to go. Um, we will be listing some of these uh, disk drives on our website at tronicsfix.com. So if you need one, uh, we should have them. If you don't see them on there, we may be out of stock or, you know, we may have just not updated our site yet. So just let us know if you um, need one and we don't have it listed. We may have one sitting around in our shop somewhere. Uh, feel free to give uh, any comments or questions and we'd be happy to um, answer them. And um, thanks for watching.